Why not join over 1 million traders globally who've already chosen CMC Markets? CMC Markets support you whenever the markets are open with award-winning platforms backed by 30 years experience. So trade your way. Visit cmcmarkets.com. All trading involves risks. Betfair Edge. Thanks to Betfair. Your edge, your way on Betfair this spring. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Oh, good morning and welcome to the Betfair Edge, wherever you are listening right around the country. Miles Fitzner with you. And if you want better odds, well, you could have got them on Brownline Premiership Markets at Betfair and you could have set your own with Betfair. Make sure you always gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Well, a special post-grand final edition of the Betfair Edge here from Optus Stadium this morning, and wherever you're listening right around the country, I'm have to put the call out early. I need your help. And the reason I need your help is because, well, with Grand Final, especially here in Perth, maybe even back there in the east, is a few people might go a little bit hard Grand Final Day. Maybe a few of our staff go a little bit hard Grand Final Day. Maybe I went a little bit hard on Grand Final Day. But uh, as they say, you play with the boys, you get up with the men. I'm riding solo, riding solo for the next hour on the Betfair Edge. It might have been a communication error. I think Timmy Geel, well, we won't be hearing from him from Betfair for some time because the D's got up. Luke White's probably still getting over Ollie Wines, which I do have to apologise for at $81, mind you, after I called it the lay of the century. And uh, we might even see if we can get maybe Tommy Haylock on the line a little bit later to come and join us too. But we do it all for Betfair, but I need your help. I want to hear from you this morning. I want your thoughts. Well, on the footy, uh, your thoughts on the weekend, on the punt, anything, I'm more than happy to talk to you. 0499 736 736. We'll even take your calls. We'll even take your calls, JD. Are we going to do that straight up off the bat? I think we are. What are we, 1300 23 48? 1300 23 48. If you want to have a chat to me this morning, I really need your help. Well, it was a big day here yesterday. Perth have turned it on. For the grand final, and uh, I was fortunate enough to sit right on the fence. Actually sat next to the great Tom Brown, the breaking journo of Channel 7. He uh, had the headphones on next to me. One had a little bit of uh, of tomato sauce going down the chin too. I just reminded him of to get that off after he had a little burger there. But it was a spectacle. Uh, to, To describe it, I don't think the videos will. I don't think anyone probably telling you about it will be able to describe it either. It, it's, it, 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 was, it was eerie, but in a way electric. The way people filled it, there were no spare seats. But, but the, the national anthem was one thing I wanted to talk about this morning. That, I'm not sure if it came across on the TV, but the national anthem, people, it, they sung it in the stadium like it was almost under their breath, but loud at the same time was sick, like 60,000 people, 60,000 people sort of all singing. It was like a perfect harmony. It was under their breath. It, it was eerie. It, it made you, you got goosebumps, but not the normal like national anthem goosebumps. It was like, there was like an echo in there, like it was some sort of um, choir chamber. It was, it was really, really, it was magnificent. And then, well, Birds of Tokyo, then uh, turned it on at half time. Oh, I, I had the headphones in at half time, so I didn't get to hear it. But fortunately enough, wait for this. The big boss. Hutchie puts on Birds of Tokyo at our SEN after party back at Crown. And look, there's a few off the text this morning that are already chiming in with maybe the way I'm sounding here this morning. Yes, I did go and partake. But uh, like I said, if you want to go and play, you've got to get, you've got to get up. And go to work. Uh, Sean's chimed in from Perth. Shawnee, mate, um, might need a call from you soon. I might need a call from you soon. Bit dusty this morning, Miles. I had a ripper night at the Cannington Greyhounds last night. Do you have a Scandolo tip for us today? I do, mate. I'm going to give you one uh, at two day today, a little bit later from the great man Terry Layton himself. But uh, in a little while, Shawnee, I'm probably going to need, probably going to need a uh, a call from you at some point. Good morning, Miles. You can handle doing it on your own. Have a ripper. Cheers, big fella. Well, I've got David Taggart joining me afterwards for track. Uh, after 12, of course, coming up in about 45 minutes' time. I wonder how he's going to be. The Demons. 
Oh, what a drought. 74 points. Huge. Um, who else is coming off the text? We want to hear from you. 0499 736 736. G'day, Miles. Hope you had a ripper day yesterday. Had a huge fill up with tags and the boys yesterday. Is he backing up today? Yeah, well, I hope he is. I hope he is. I don't have any of the Betfair boys in with me this morning, and I do miss them. I miss them greatly. Luke White, <laughs> but Timmy Jill. You won't you won't find Timmy Jill for two months. <laughs> He's gone. He's a bloke that wears. He literally wears Melbourne Demon socks and underwear. He absolutely loves it. Uh, Braden, uh, I might need a call from you too shortly. Mix chimed in from Bayswater. Here we go. Hey, Milo. Great day yesterday. Heaps of winners. And then how good were Melbourne? What a day. Can't wait to hear from Tags. Well, we'll get into the racing in a little while. If you listen to the SA and the WA and the Vic Betfair shows, it, um, Claire Lindop, Adam Mintz, Terry Layton, myself, and, of course, Tommy Haylock. It was one of those days where you picked quite a few. It was... a uh, a multiple, multiple winner day. Um, early starts. Some were short, um, but happy to back them. Tell us your punting stories from yesterday. Obviously did the function circuit here um, for SEN, and uh, we were up, down, in, and everywhere. And the only bet I had on the footy, um, other than the two longies I said for uh, on Betfair for the Norm Smith, which I had a two little dabbles at Bailey Smith and Jack Viney, was the Bulldogs to lead at half time and Melbourne to win. Um and uh, that sort of came off quite nicely. Oh, look, the team are looking after me this morning. Keep sending some texts in because this is going to be a long hour. 0499 736 736. Hey, Milo, trackside yesterday was one of the best ever. Well, hang on a minute. One of the best ever? And Shannon, we need to get to the bottom of this. Anyway, Tagalow was in fine form. Cam Luke couldn't find a winner. Grand final prelude. Do you mean it was one of the best ever in winners-wise? Because they, they would have to have a massive, massive, massive day. What did everyone make of David Taggart turning around and saying, who needs me? I, I, he turned on me. It's quick to bail. 0499 736 736 post-grand final. Best weekend on the punt of all time so far. Couldn't lose yesterday, including in the Congo, even at Petrarca, first goal and Melbourne 60-plus from Rhino. Mate, that's that's a day. That is a serious, serious day. Um, yeah, Petrarca, what a performance. Grand final uh, record for the most possessions. The one thing I do want to think um, or get your opinion on from everyone is Bailey Fritch kicks six in a granny. Now, we still talk about the big games played in grand finals in years gone by by... You know, people kicking seven, eight, and nine, but six in this day and age, like that, those were in the eras of, of power forwards, and where big bags were actually a lot more common. But if you kick six goals in a grand final, that's massive, absolutely massive. I'm not saying you should have got Norm Smith, but geez, you'd, you've had a day out, haven't you? Dobbing six, uh, Mitch, he's chimed in from Mount Gambier. He's over here. You're in Perth. Mitchy, I didn't. I completely forgot. I saw uh, a post go up from Chels saying you were here, sounding very similar to me this morning. Fitz, strained. Yes, it's uh, it's been a week. Incredible. You're still standing. Fitz, awesome game. JC from Hawthorne. Yeah, well, it was an awesome game. The spectacle in itself, and I want your thoughts on on the spectacle. How did it come across if you're at the game or on the TV? Everyone lighting their phones up when the the stadium went dark. Um, from the game itself, the atmosphere there, um, it, it was incredible. The one thing I will say about Optus Stadium, and I'll tell this story now so I don't have to tell it to David Taggart later, um, is I was racing from my position um, on the boundary, which was on the fence, you couldn't actually be on the boundary, to go down to get into the race, um, to get onto the ground, to get a post-game interview. And so I've run sort of up the stairs, out the back and jumped in the lift. And the lift at the back was going up and down with the, with the um, service people. So we got stuck on level three and the doors are only opening one inch. And we, had to, we actually had to jam the lift open with our hands and then go down the three flights of stairs to the ground to then get out onto the ground. And uh, as we were walking back, they were having all sorts of trouble because... They were trying to get a heap of the stuff out and the lift had actually broken. Uh, and we had to jam it open myself and 
these two young blokes that were just about to knock off work that had been there running drinks up and down the stairs, jam the thing open. So if you boys are listening, I told you to tune in, and I said I'd mention it. Shout out to you boys helping me jam that lift open. Otherwise, we'd still be in there and be in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> it was uh, it was not not ideal at the time, and especially we got stuck in the um, media pen on the oval, which was I thought that was pretty ordinary. Yeah, um, to be perfectly honest, got walked out and put in this little roped area to try and get post game interviews. Well, didn't stop me, of course. Walked out and tried to grab Jack's arms, got in all sorts of trouble for it. But look, it's not like I'm ever going to be boundary riding a grand final in Perth ever again, is it? A few more off the text. This is what we're after. Traka for Norm equals 300, up 800 on the horses from 35 from Braden. Geez, that's good. He felt vulnerable. That's not bad. Uh, here we go. Hi, Milo. I was in the punters club yesterday, so I need some winners today to put my $500 of bonus bets on. Simo and Avondale Heights. Simo, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I did is on Thursday, I did my Sunday form so that I didn't have to do it this morning or last night so I could have a bit of a play and play up. So uh, I think I've got a few today, a couple of little specials, but I don't have, uh, there's not a one launch today, team. So there's not something I'm really, really, really confident in, but there's a couple of nice bets I want to have. Um, Fritz would have got Norm if Tracker didn't set him up with three and kick two himself. Yeah, well, true. It's, you're not bad there, Braden. I'll get to some of those other texts in a minute. But let's go to this, man. I want to talk some greyhound racing, and let's talk to the best in the business from GRV. And I speak of Trent Langscow. Hello to you, Trent. Hello to you, Vols. Great to have a chat, as always. And courage comes in all forms, and you're showing it right now. A short course <laughs> superstar and one of your absolute favourites is in action at sale tonight. Hope you can stay up that long. There are many other classy greyhounds that will be racing at sale as well. A potential top liner is the headline act at Sandown Park this afternoon. Yeah, I don't know about courage, uh, but I had a cup of something last night, Trent. Uh, the first heat of the sale sprint championship features one of the quickest greyhounds, not only in Victoria, but Australia. Seb, Ferdinand Boy is the greyhound you are referring to. The winner of 27 races from 49 starts is racing for the first time since claiming the $50,000 to the winner Group 2 SEN Track Hillsville Cup Final a fortnight ago. Ferdinand Boy also secured a $50,000 GRV bonus for winning his third country cup in a calendar year. Ferdinand Boy returning to sale for the first time since his triumph in the inaugural The Horizon in June is the $1.45 favourite from Box 2 to win race four at 6.47. Track specialist Soda Prince, victorious in 12 of his 30 races, is considered the biggest danger as the $2.80 second elect from box eight. But I know you're waiting for Ferdinand Boy, Miles. Oh, I do. You know I love Ferdinand Boy. Uh, Trent, peep, I love Ferdinand Boy like Tim Gill loves Christian Petrarca this morning. There's plenty of other <laughs> heartthrobs in the second and third heats of the South Sprint Championship, though. You're spot on, Miles. Race nine at 8.24 is the second heat. Pink Diamond winner, Aussie Secret, victorious in 29 of his 55 races, is the $1.50 favourite and will exit from box one. Amiga Dodge, who is aiming to stretch his winning streak to six races, is the $3.80 second elect, while Handsome Jack, triumphant in four of his last five starts, is a $5 chance. Group three winner, Dr Tucker, has not raced since winning at Sandown Park on July 15 but he is the $1.35 favourite from Box 5 to claim his 17th career victory in the third heat, which is race 10 at 8.43. Kennel mate Dr Knuckles has won three of his last four and is a $6 hope. Before that red-hot meeting commences at sale, a star in the making, no, Trent, is racing over the 7.15 at Sandown Park. That's right, Miles. Zach's entity has only raced four times, but he has already created a huge impression. At his first start, Zach's entity won by almost 15 lengths in a time of 29.25 seconds, which is the second fastest time ever for a maiden winner at Sandown Park over the 515 metres. At his third start, he finished third in the Group 3 600-metre speed star at the Meadows, won by Kalinda Patty, the current track record holder at Sandown Park over 595 metres. Zach's entity miles, a dollar and six to win race five at 3.34 this afternoon and will exit from box four. Also, Miles, 
Aston Rupee was the first greyhound to run less than 30 seconds over the 530 metre trip at Angle Park on Thursday night in the match race series and is now $1.70 for the Adelaide Cup final on the night of Friday, October 8. And I know you'll definitely be at Angle Park. Oh, yeah, it's on my home deck there. I'll be flying out of here in Perth tonight, Trent. Uh, it's a jam-packed day, not a greyhound action. Don't forget Jason Bonington, Mitch Abaya, they'll all cover it uh, on sale Sundays. They can come in earlier if they want, uh, and I might just be able to sneak off to the airport <laughs> from 5pm on SEN track. Hey, Trent, did you watch the game last night, mate? Did you enjoy it? I did, Miles. I thought it would be a pretty close affair. I, I did think Melbourne would win, but they were just absolutely amazing. That third quarter, that was what we saw in the last quarter at GMHBA Stadium against Geelong in round 23. The Cats felt the brunt of that a couple of weeks ago in the preliminary final, and it was just awesome. And I can imagine how great it was for you and everyone there to watch it at Optus Stadium, but just the complete barrage in that third quarter and the start of the last quarter, and you can probably say from the body of evidence throughout the season, they were the best side. They finished on top and deserved, and no wonder we won't hear from Till. We won't hear from Tim and plenty of others oh, yeah. after <laughs> 1964. It's been a long time and fully deserved, and you only think of all the people involved with the Demons, Robbie Flower, Jim Steins, and as someone, Miles just personally lost my mum to MND, and I just think of Neil Danaher and how rapt he would have been sitting on the couch last night with his family as the demons prevailed. Yeah, and uh, well, sorry to hear, but you're right, um, Trent, you know, the Neil Danaher aspect, but you know, Melbourne have been through a lot of trauma, you know, with, with Broadbridge and Jim Steins, you know, Colin yeah. Sylvia even recently. They've been through a lot. The one thing I just quickly wanted to ask you, mate, was what, what did it look like on the TV, the atmosphere at Optus Stadium? Did it look as good as it... It's never going to be as good as it is at the ground, but were, were you... Were you uh, just amazed by what the stadium was able to do? It does look fantastic, Miles. I haven't been there yet as a Hawthorne man. I haven't seen them against either the Eagles or the Dockers, but it is a venue that would love to check out, having been to Subiaco a couple of times. But just the Coliseum aspect, and you only have to look at the way it's been built, and we've seen some fantastic cricket there as well since it's moved from the Wacker ground to Optus Stadium. It does look fantastic, and... I guess the night aspect as well with the ability to have the, the light show and oh, not too much for the halftime entertainment <laughs> at yeah. the best of times. Bowls. But it, it did look fantastic. And the fact that it would, you had the two Victorian sides there, could you only imagine if West Coast or Fremantle had have been able to qualify and oh. they would have found out they could have been <laughs> playing in the grand final in WA? My goodness. It would have been pandemonium. Trent, we've got to jump to a break, my friend. Thanks for chatting with us, and uh, we'll chat again soon. Always, Miles. Great to have a chat. And remember, please gamble responsibly. Trent Langscale there from GRV. He's one of the best in the business. And Greyhound Racing continues under strict protocols, securing employment for more than 4,000 Victorians. And you can now watch every Victorian Greyhound race live and free by downloading the Watchdog app or follow Watchdog Racing on Twitter or Facebook. This is the Betfair Edge. Miles Fitzner with you. I'm going solo right through till 12. I've got all your texts here. I promise I'll read them because I need them, but send them to me, 0499 736 736. We'll get to your texts when we come back on the other side of this. I might need a little glass of water. This is the best bet fair edge. Betfair Edge, thanks to Betfair. Your edge, your way on Betfair this spring. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Welcome back to the Betfair Edge. And if you want better odds, uh, you can get them this entire spring carnival. The Brownline Premiership markets you can't bet on anymore because it's over. It's done. Norm Smith, the whole lot. And no doubt you would have got a good price at Betfair. I'm going to run through some of those results a bit later in the show. But make sure you always gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. As promised, I'm going through all the texts because I need your help today because I've got no one from the Betfair team. Uh, I've got no one here in the Perth studio. Everyone here from an SEN aspect here in WA uh, is probably having a snooze um, because – and I didn't do my voice any favours. After punching out Paul Simons, you can call me Al, uh, and you're the voice at karaoke at the SEN track after party last night. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Shannon from Bonnells Bay. The fellas got to 10,500 each in bonus bets for the 20 who were in the punt group. 
Tags found winners all day. I'll pump him up today. I'll get him. If he's not up and about today, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> we'll get him up and about. Punting story. Landed a huge result. This is from Mitchell Mount Gambia. Landed a huge result laying off on flexible weight at Sandown after I had it going for a huge multi. Back most of the rest of the field. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a way to do it, Mitchie. I reckon you even wrote me a message, mate, but I just didn't get to it. Luke from Sydney. Um, would you like me to do a door dash? A door dash, you a kebab and some strepsils. Mate, it, if you could get them here to op the stadium, it's because we're right in near Gate D, it's a bit hard. But, geez, what I would do for a kebab and some strepsils right now, I can tell you that. Uh, but thank you for the offer, Lukey, in Sydney. Angus Brayshaw's game was underrated. He was so composed when everyone else was panicking. Trust him every time he had the ball. Yeah, I, when I was on the boundary, Rhino, um, I noticed he caught one a bit high under the rib. And, oh, I didn't know whether or not it was a rib injury at first, but I think it might have been that shoulder. He was. There'll be a story about that. He played, he played it, I reckon that he was 60%, and he was very, very good, but he was injured and severely injured. Um, there'll be a story come out during the week, I'm sure, about how badly injured he was. But uh, he was very, very hurt. Um, agree, Milo. Fritch was huge, but how good were the two that Pedraka kicked freakishly good? Oh, Twigs from Cranny, mate. That dribble goal, I'll never forget watching that. Like, he was just so clean. I uh, love the commentary of Hudson and Jared. They brought atmosphere to me while I was listening to the game on my computer via the AFL website. Great call, Jared and Anthony from Jason. Morning, Fitzy. Just drove through Coldstream, home of the Fritzer. Balloons everywhere. Uh, clearly, the place was jumping last night from Lee. Uh, yeah, well, I think there was a few places jumping last night. I'll talk about that on the other side of the news about what it was like here after the grand final heading towards Crown. Sort of a, a kilometre walk to Crown Casino from here. And, yeah, it was something else. Uh, g'day, Miles. Surely Tags is a bit dusty this morning. Great night at the Greyhounds last night with a few winners. Get some winners today. Happy punting. Cheers from Connor. Good on you, Connor. And good to see you, mate, the other Saturday. Um, glad that Dees did it for my cousin, Greg Park, who passed away grand final morning. He played for both clubs, but was a demons man, Paul in Dubbo. Yeah, well, Paul, I'm glad they are for you too, mate. Um, and sorry to hear about that. And But you, you, there's, a, there's so many stories to come out of this win. Uh, phenomenal. Gary Lyons said at the after party last night, they went back out on the Oval just with a couple of buckets of beers and sat there for two hours. Just sitting in the middle of the oval, the demon side. Um, you should have seen the crowd when Gary stood up in his chair. I was amazing. Hey, Miles, uh, what have we got here? Um, you're looking after me today, team, too. Hey, Miles, sounding a bit croaky like me today. Up the Ds. I had a fill-up yesterday with the team and a nice same-game multi-win, which was a cherry on top. Having a couple of brekkie beers while watching the replay. Salem was huge early. Al from Ocean Grove. Geez, Al, you're more brave than I am. Couldn't think of anything. Couldn't think of anything worse at the moment. Let's go to the news. I'll get to the rest of the text on the other side of this. This is a Betfair Edge with Miles Fitzner in Perth. Welcome back to the Betfair Edge, Miles Fitzner, with you and the team. You are you have come for me today, and I'm very, very grateful. Very, very grateful. And this is what this is why I love the people of SEN because you know I'm under duress here, and you've I've asked you to text me, and you have. And if you want better odds, go to Betfair. We'll talk about the racing a little bit. Well, coming up in a little bit anyway. Uh, morning, Milo. Yesterday, the best day ever. It was in the Trackside Punters Club. Huge result. Back winners everywhere, following tags in. Legendary effort by the six-timer. Took the Punters Club payout. Plonked it on the Demons Petrarca multi for a free hit. Pockets are full. Head is foggy. But I've never felt better. Oh, what a day. It just sounds like everyone had a great day yesterday. That was Sammy from Brunswick. Uh, one to follow from Sandown yesterday was a first starter pre to turn. Ran second, enormous, beautiful action, serious galloper, Guineas quality. D from Geelong. Thanks for the text, D. Let's go, boys. Can't wait for another big Sunday on the punt. Look, neither can I, uh, to be perfectly honest. Hey, Milo, pumped to hear from Tags. What a win by the Ds from Dow. Anyone see Paddy Garshagan's tweet? Oh, did anyone see that? Has anyone seen Paddy Garshagan? On Twitter, I don't, I don't think I could talk about it because we want everyone to drink responsibly, of course. But holy dooly, the big boy, he was up and about. I don't think we'll be getting any more audio of him complaining about the D's anytime soon. <laughs> G'day, Miles. Had a great sporting day. Back multiple winners in the Congo. Well, Petey, to name a few, then loaded up on floating artists. Reckon floating artists is a sneaky Melbourne Cup chance. 
Then our three-leg multi get up in the grand final, thanks to Tommy McDonald for kicking his second after the siren to get it over the line. Honestly, I didn't even know Tommy McDonald did that because I was in the elevator trying to jam it open with my hands. So I didn't even know that it happened until I just heard that call of uh, <laughs> Jared of Jared's just then. Then I hit the can, stayed up and watched uh, my Brentford side draw 3-3 with the might of Liverpool in what was a belter of a game. And even better, I took the juicy odds of 4.25 for the draw. I'm at work now with a thumping hangover, but I'm happy as a die. Yep, right. <laughs> Statsy from Freshwater. You nearly got, mate, you can't stitch me up like that, Statsy. I nearly read it out. I'm like Ron Burgundy. And when you're a bit fuzzy, I nearly read it. Lockdown is killing us in Sydney, but thank God for Nash. Best front-running uh, rider and lifting a horse jock in Australia. I know Tags rates him. Yeah, he's good. Sounding quite good, all considering great man. Get an egg and bacon in here from Sampa. I've already done that, Sampa. Uh, and, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Guru said, get the butter menthols into your miles from Albert Park. Uh, morning, Miles. I have one I like today at Mornington and want to multi it in with the great man Terry Layton's tip at two day. If you can please let us know what it is, it would be great. You know what? Since you guys have all looked after me, let's give it out straight away. And I'll just do that. There's no point in sitting on it now. We go to two day. We go to race number six. And the tip is the six, Leocardo. So race six, number six at two day. JD, if you want to write that down, it's a great Terry Layton's tip today. That's what it is. Go and multi it in. The team have looked after me today. I'll look after you nice and early. Good on you, Louis in Adelaide. Hey, Fitz, hope you've enjoyed yourself in Perth. What are the highlights? Mick from Solder Point. Michael, um, sitting down and having dinner with Paul Hazelby and Adam Gilchrist is something I'll probably never forget in my entire life. But the people... See, I, I've never met these people in person, Michael. So guys that you watch on TV and idolise, and me being a bloke from the sticks, and oh, I'm an everyday... I'm the most everyday bloke you've ever met in your entire life. Knock about... You know, I'll drive tractors, walk around barefoot in a pair of footy shorts and and have a VB like anybody else. But guys like Adam Gilchrist, Paul Hazelby and Tim Gossage over here, our team over here, I've never met... Like, they are just the loveliest people, the nicest, most genuine, helpful people that you will meet. And coming over here to WA and and us all working for the same business, but... Everyone runs their own shows, and, and we don't see these people or inter-associate really um, or cross on, on shows together. But, you know, Goz has looked after me. Goz bought me a pair of binoculars in. He's showed me around the studio. You know, Paul Hazelby was introducing me to other people and sitting down to go and get you a drink. Like, really, really just top-quality, excellent people. Yeah, and, and Adam Gilchrist, that's – to meet someone that you've just grew up idolising and then – for them to be a better bloke than you thought they'd be. Like, just the nicest guy. The most genuine nicest guy. And funny. Like, really, really funny. But they're my highlights, mate. It's just meeting the people. Like, um, what I, I will tell you one thing, though, Michael, which was really funny. Because I had a suit on and I had a, an arena pass around my neck and everyone's dressed up in, everyone's dressed up in demon's gear and all this sort of stuff. People think you're important. For no reason, which you're not. So sort of cutting through crown, someone would say, oh, oh, can I grab a photo? And so they grab a photo with you, but while they're grabbing the photo with you, they're trying to look at your name tag to read your name. And I've only got a small AFL accreditation pass. And my last name's not that easy to read. And the, like I was, I was in hysterics because they... <laughs> They had no idea who I was. They were just getting a photo just in case I was someone because I had a suit and a shirt on <laughs> and uh, and an AFL pass. Uh, hey, Fitz, thoughts on Perth and the people of Perth? El Nudo, mate, Perth's great. I, I, my sister lives here, absolutely love it. But the people here are great and they've embraced it. Here. Pandemonium at Crown last night. I mean, you don't ever see the best of people at 2 a.m. trying to get a taxi out of, out of, the, uh, out of the casino. But um, it's been excellent. Everyone's been in a good mood. The vibe here, the, the cam field over the road from Opt has been enormous. Hey, Fitzy, did you see Paddy on Insta drinking out of his boot? Must have been a big night. Yeah, Connor, I did. Miles, hang in Perth for another day and come to the Northern Races. Connor has his horse out for its first run in race five. Till Hutchie, you need a day with the boys. Sean, to be perfectly honest, mate, the last thing I need right now is a day with the boys. I don't, I'm on a plane at five o'clock, get in it. SA at 11, and then I might be um, 
Uh, might be having a week off, but going to we do an auction or two. Fitz, last time you run to duress, it was a monster fill-up. Fingers crossed it's the same for today. Have a good day, brother, from El Nudo. Sports Pet shared Paddy doing a Daniel Avocado on Facebook. What an animal. Twigs from Cranny. Morning, lads. DJ Bart checking in. Morning to you, DJ. Gilly's an absolute legend. You're spot on there. Miles from Dal again. Uh, sounds like you've lived a dream this weekend. Well deserved. Dal, I'm pinching myself. Pinching myself. Not going to lie. I went to a few of these functions and I couldn't stop. You know, if you, my right hand shaking. I was that nervous. Um, and, and going in. And you know when you get that little bit of a sort of clammy sweat on your brow? And I'm not a sweater. And you're sort of like, I've got to stand up in front of people and talk to people. Um, I'll never forget it. Daunting experience, though, but loved every minute of it. What was the horse number at two day again, Fitz? Phone died, just as you were saying it. Well, anything for you, El Nudo. It was race six, number six, two day. Lee's chimed in. Famous Fitzy. Bloody love it. Oh, with a question mark. No, mate, I'm not famous. I just thought it was funny because I had a suit on and people wanted to get a photo because he had a suit and a pass on. It was uh, it was very, very humorous. Anyway, the, the the crowds keep sending us a text. I'll read them out. 0499 736 736. I really need your help. I've got 20 minutes to go till Tagaloa joins me. And you're getting me through here on the Betfair Edge. I've... I've just got a text come through uh, from Luke, the Hurricane White. Now, it's, this is not his fault. It's not his fault. Two weeks ago, he lined up that he wasn't in on this show. So it's been an errant communication. He said, you're joking. They've left you high and dry. Dry is the right word at the moment. Uh, <laughs> if you can't tell, it might, I, I, it might have something to do with the 14 functions. Like, I'm sick of my own voice. And that takes a bit. <laughs> I'm genuinely sick of my own voice. It's been talking nonstop, but then karaoke, essentially last night, and screaming out birds of Tokyo and you know what, um, or even trying to talk on the ground. You sort of had to yell into the microphone um, when you were boundary riding because the, it was so loud uh, in that stadium. It was not funny. Thoughts on Mornington Race 3 fits. I'm thinking Starry Legend. Um yeah, I've got the seven and the eight in that race, JC. So Starry Legend, but I uh, the billionaire can also run a bit of a drum. Uh, what did you think of the pre-game entertainment, uh, Jake from Clyde? Jake, I, I, I didn't actually. I was sitting on the fence, and because you're listening to the guys talk upstairs when they cross you on the boundary, you don't actually pay that huge amount of attention. So I, I, I couldn't actually hear most of that because we were doing a pre-game, but. Um, yeah, I don't want to comment with really not actually. I sort of had a book in front of me taking notes, but I'll take more texts. Oh four double nine seven three six seven three six. I'm going to need, I'm going to need you to get me through the next eighteen minutes. It's a grand final edition. The demons they broke a drought. My throat is in drought. Might talk a little bit of. Well, what does everyone think about the NRL? What happened there? What happened there? The Panthers beat the Storm and the Rabbitohs over the. Se- what that's been turned on its head. The NRL. We haven't really spoken about that at all. We're gonna to jump to a break. When we come back on the other side of this, you the people right around Australia are gonna help me through the last ten minutes. I won't forget it. And hopefully I can re- reward you with a few winners on trackside coming up at twelve when the great man D Taggart walks in. This is the Betfair Edge. Thanks to Betfair. I've got none of their staff here today, but that doesn't matter because I love Betfair. And I've settled up, and I'll be back in a minute. Betfair Edge. Thanks to Betfair. Your edge, your way. On Betfair this spring. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Welcome back to the Betfair Edge. Miles Fitzner with you from Optus Stadium, and I'm here on my own. There's not another soul anywhere to be seen. Not within, well, at least a K, because that's Crown. (laughs) There's no one here. So help me out, 0499 736 736, thanks to Betfair. And it was good to catch up with Chrissy from Betfair last night and she had the full uh, Betfair crew that had been at the at the, uh, at the the footy and Terry Layton and the likes. So we've got a few there, uh, but, yeah, we love Betfair. We love them a lot. Um, I'm going to get through these texts to finish. Here we go. What was a drink of choice last night, Miles? Uh, anything that was wet, Shannon, from Bonnells Bay? Uh, vodka, lime and sodas for me. 
Um, Fitzy got Petrarca at 26 as for Norm prior to the prelim. When he kicked that second goal, I felt like I was at the ground shouting that loud. Um, can you believe it? I asked my five-year-old son before the game what number player will be best on ground and first goal. He said five for both from the Ds. Didn't multi up. I think it paid 90s. Oh, no, that hurts. Hey, Milo, battle through legend. It gets easier as you go. A good thing today for the listeners. Here we go. And this is what I need. Uh, race 8, number 10, Deep Strike. Price lane, 380, but will shorten, jump aboard. The nose picker from Anglesey. Um, best on ground. Um, that's just come in as best on ground. Who is? Me. I would have thought so, because I'm the only one on ground at the moment. <laughs> So I think, yeah, could you give yourself three votes in the morning? Surely not. I like Campbell in the ninth at Benella. Short but should win Lee from Williamstown. Uh, storm choke, mate. So many errors. Um, that doesn't normally happen. You obviously haven't seen any of it yet. Uh, as a D's man, I did a run after the siren wearing an old woolen D's jumper and a Guernsey and a plastic pitchfork. Numb nuts from Bayswater. Lucky doing a racing show fits magic. You sound a little hoarse. Apologies if that's been done already. It hasn't, Scotty, surprisingly. I want to keep hearing your voice, Miles. More winners today, please. I'm flat from the storm losing and looking forward to tags after yesterday. Fill up. Might ask him for the quaddy numbers today. That's for the, the young bloke. Hey, Miles. Mrs. Big Fella's been trying to get in the punters club for 78 weeks. I kid you not. Finally got in yesterday. And $500 bonus bet collect. Wow, worth the wait. Hey, by the way, Melbourne Storm picked the wrong time to play their worst game for a hell of a long time. Turnovers killed them the whole game. Thanks, big fella. I was at the Storm game and one of the worst games they've played all year. They just could hold on to the ball, plus having the cheese with out and Welsh out with concussion the first half didn't help. Andrew, GC, Miles, tags will be need to be strong carrying you today. Uh, NRL, Melbourne look flat. Penrith are the best side, but Wayne Bennett is coaching the biggest game of his life. Woodsy from Bronte. Oh, tag's carrying me. It's where I do my best work under duress. Diamonds are made under pressure, remember? Diamonds are made under pressure. Uh, wish we had the live footage from the track studio today. Shout out, oh, you don't want to see me today. I did send JD a video about walking in. You can probably tell by my eyes I'm looking a little bit ordinary. It's about to go up. Um, Guru from Albert Park, how lucky are we to have you back up after the biggest week of your life, Fitz. Looking forward to the A-team doing what... They do Sunday after Sunday, picking winners and filling our pockets. Good on you, El Nudo. Thanks, mate. Beefer from Hamilton. Storm hurting today, mate. Let's hope you have a good day on the punt. Good on you, Beefer. Shout out to you, my good friend. Um, hi, Miles. Looking forward to the show today. Tag should be rocking and a rolling. I'm going to need him to have some energy. I, I can't I can't pick him up today. In the home straight, Fitzy now. Dig deep like you want it. Yeah, we've got four minutes to go. Fitz, number three at the Ville. Great work last night, too, from eBay. Number three at the Ville. eBay's chimed in. Hillsville, number three. <clears throat> Have we missed it? Are we there? I can't see. No? Are we there? Yeah, race four at Hillsville. We're on the three, thanks to Mitch Abaya. Bulldog supporter here, Fitz. Keen for a fill-up, but not sure I can deal with tags today. From Lemon. Yeah, huge. Um... Yeah, with Big Lemon. Mickey Collins has chimed in. Surprise, surprise. Mickey Collins has got a, another $81 winner. He backed the first goal scorer and the Norm Smith. $81. Bang. Good on you, Mickey. Well, I, I pushed on some of the Betfair shows, remember, that, that the Bulldogs were the best back-to-lay strategy, I thought, with Betfair. And that was right. Um, even some of the functions we did over here, I... The Bulldogs, the bet, oh, I thought the best bet was the Bulldogs to lead at halftime and the Demons to run over the top of them. I'm pretty sure I've been saying that all, all week. Um, just touch on yesterday on the racing a little bit. Uh, hopefully you followed some best bets. I had a reasonable day at Belmont and Morfittville. Um, we sort of had Wild Ruler. Tommy Haylock tipped the Quinella in the Moyer on Friday night on the Victorian Betfair Edge Show. And um, it was very, very early doors there. Uh so if, if you'd followed the shows, and just a reminder to everyone, I know that a lot of people like to send me texts and say, what are your tips? All those shows go up on the SEN app. On the SEN app, you just go to the catch-up section and go and find them, and all of our card reviews are always in the last 15, 20 minutes and our best bets of each of those shows. So you can go back, if you ever want to find them, uh, and um, 
and just listen to the, the last few minutes of the Betfair Edge shows. That's where you can find all the tips. And we actually discuss all the races in, so you can hear us talk about other horses and get your opinions, um, even on Twitter, where you can follow us. Or you can flick me a follow if you want. If you want to go see uh, Birds of Tokyo and me spinning around the room on my Instagram, you can go there too if you, if, if you have a look. I've tried to post a few of them today. Had DJ Hutchie on the decks last night too, leading a, some sort of sing-along it was at Crown. And, well, hopefully um, a lot of you enjoyed your day. It seems like people right around the country, we've had texts from Sydney and even Perth here today. Hopefully you had a good day. It seemed like a good day all round on the punt. Maybe uh, not so much if you're a Bulldogs or a Storm supporter, but look, if, in the interest of sport, who doesn't love seeing a big drought get broken? I mean, we're all over the doggies in 2016 and how good that was. Um, but yeah, what you want is you, you want teams succeeding and getting there and to break a big drought like that, especially, you know, Neil Danaher is the one that gets me, but some of my old mates being old Demons boys um, and a shout out to Dunny and Ricky and Johnny and all the boys today that have went through a fair bit at the D's. Daniel Bell didn't have a lot of success. I spoke to James Harms about it last night on the ground and there was a lot of people that didn't win a lot of games at the Demons for a long time and oh, I think of blokes like Lyndon Dunn who joined us here on SEN track. He played 198 games and never played in a final. 198 games and never played in a final. So huge for the club. A couple more off the text. Champions lift. Dig deep. Uh, DJ Bart kept swinging. Uh, I'm on the six at the Ville hoping Mitch would be on it with Rhino. Haven't heard much about Mark Choco Williams. What a difference. He's made to Melbourne from Guru. How impressive was Shelly Ope? Super. Morning, Milo. Looking forward to a funny arvo with the A-team. Giddy up. Lay of the day, thanks to Betfair. <clears throat> Jeez, if I had one, uh, I'd give it to you. The lay of the day is, give me some time to uh, to put my quaddies up. That's if I get them up in time. The one I'm probably going to lay, I- I'm-, I'm-, I'm probably going to try to take on groovy kind of love. At Mornington in race two. Didn't go too hard. Coming up after this, six-time Group 1 winner, Herald Sun featuring Melbourne's number, I don't know, probably about 10 or 15 ticket holder. The one, the only, David Taggart. This has been the Betfair Edge, and thank you for helping me through. We'll see you shortly. Why not join over 1 million traders globally who've already chosen CMC Markets? CMC Markets support you whenever the markets are open with award-winning platforms backed by 30 years' experience. So trade your way. Visit cmcmarkets.com. All trading involves risks.